When you two both heard about the film six years, did you have a gut feeling that you were going to get the part? Huh. Uh, I knew I wanted it. I didn't know if I would get it. I don't think you can ever know if you're going to get it. But I know I, I had a great... Uh, my meet, my first meeting was a Skype session with uh, Hannah Fidel, the, the director, and Mark Duplass. And the Skype went well. I thought they loved me. I thought I could charm them a little bit. So I had high hopes. Yeah. I had the exact same experience. I read it and I was like, I could definitely really play this part and I want it. And then after the Skype, I was like, this sounds great. Hope I get it. Because I imagine that even though you have a great feeling, there's been other times when you haven't gotten something. Because I know that's a typical thing for actors. Like yeah. Sometimes it's the worst audition they end up getting. And they, and they love you and you're like, okay, I have no idea what I did, <laughs> but I'll try and do it again. Yeah. yeah. Or you think you killed it. And, and then you hear, like, no. oh, just yeah. your best. I'm like, I tried so hard. <laughs> right. When do you start learning your lines for your characters? For Mel and Dan, uh, well, for six years though, it was a lot of improv. Yeah, so. it's a mostly improvised movie. So we couldn't really try to. Yeah, there weren't a lot of lines to learn. Yeah. It was more about understanding the circumstances and where you know where the characters are at that moment, where they're just coming from, and yeah, stuff like that. So did Hannah and Mark then have like another in-person session where they said, "Okay, this is the angle that everybody's taking." Um, I mean. We both got off of the part right after the Skype sessions, yeah. and then um, during like pre-production stuff, uh, Hannah, Ben, and I, we all hung out and did bonding trips and, and really worked on um, discussing the characters and the story and the arcs and where they are like emotionally in, in, in the scenes, and yeah, that's really what helped. Yeah, actually. and we did that like four months or five months, or I don't know. We it did got, like two months. It was like a couple, few, few months in advance. Yeah, it was, a, it was a good amount of time beforehand, so we, we knew where where we should be at by the time we got to Austin. Would it, tell us about these bonding trips, if you can. Like, what, <laughs> what yeah. happens? What is it? You guys telling deep, dark secrets so you kind of get, like, this trust thing, or what's going on? Um, I mean, if we're telling deep, dark secrets, I think it kind of naturally happens yeah. when it comes out. It's not like, all right, let's sit down. We're having a session now. Tell me. Tell me what's <laughs> on the bottom of your heart. Um, it was like, but yeah. we just... Uh, I didn't know what to expect. I had never I done a bonding it. or whatever, retreat, whatever. Uh, I think it's just fancy. It was a little nerve-wracking, right? Was, I was nervous. Yeah, it was, it was just like, are we going to bond? Run on like, let's just hang out and yeah. let's figure out the, the story. And the we talked yeah. about the characters and the script, and we watched some movies that were sort of reference points and got to know each other a little bit. You before brought your guitar. I brought my guitar. Nice. Yeah, it was fun. So no trust falls or anything? No, You're not doing like, like stuff that. like just that. Okay. <laughs> we were really just hanging out. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. How much time then do you normally spend on the character before? I know you're doing this bonding trip and everything, but then did you then separate and say, well, I'm going to really think about who these people are? Yeah, I mean, a lot of it happens... Uh, I mean, when we, finally fly, when we finally flew out to Austin, we still had a couple of days before we started shooting, and, you know, like during the wardrobe fittings and all that, you're still discussing the characters, you're discussing things, and... Um, I mean, I spent time looking at the script beforehand, but you can only do so much prep work, you know, especially on such an improv-based movie. Like, I mm -hmm. we knew the general motion, so it was about 20 minutes before each scene where Hannah would come to us and we'd be like, okay, so this is kind of what we need to, the information we need to get across in the scene, and here's like a line or two in case you can't think of anything, and then she kind of just let us loose. Yeah. I think, yeah, it's totally project dependent, like... Um, certain characters demand a certain type of preparation if you're going to change your physicality or your voice or something like that and other and sometimes you have a lot of time to prepare and sometimes you just don't sometimes you only have a week or something so um, yeah it just depends now I know there were several emotional scenes in the film um, without giving away too much which do you feel was the most difficult for your character and maybe even for both of you personally mm -hmm. so there were some very intense yeah relationship moments there that I'm sure many people can relate to that have been in one. Hopefully not too many of them, but <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, there were some definite some dark moments in there. Were there I certain times? A oh. scene at the party uh, where Mel has a discovery moment, which leads to some conflicts, yeah. was uh, difficult uh, for the character, as well as difficult for, for me. For us, it was yeah. a really tough camera shot too because there's a really lot of long takes in that one and a lot of movement. So that was like another challenge. But so that was a really challenging one and therefore one of the most fun to shoot. Yeah, it's hard when it's not only physically 
uh, exhausting, you know, like it's a, we had to move around a lot, but also emotionally exhausting. You put those two together when we're shooting till like 3 a.m. and you don't even realize where the time goes and you're just so tired. Yeah, we were, after that scene, we were so like drained. We were, yeah. yeah. But then you also have that moment, you're just also proud. You have that moment of accomplishment, like, okay, I feel like we got it. We yeah. Got it, you know? Yeah, that was an excellent scene. Well, we won't give away any more information <laughs> so that people can, yeah, but I can see why you would be drained from yeah. that scene. When are you two most nervous on a film set? Uh, usually it's the first day. I mean, I, I just love once, like, the first couple days are over with and you're in the the scent whatever the kind of routine it is because no movie has a real routine because everything's always up in the air and changing but the first day you just wanna you just wanna do well and make sure like you think you're prepared and you're ready and you know the character but you just never know how the day is gonna go it's the first day for me yeah first day of school jitters <laughs> I don't get nervous when I make a film um, no I feel like really relaxation is like the key to good work in a lot of ways so I've gotten good at just going into it. Interesting. So, so you, it's not where you're like, hmm, I'm not sure how the mood of the set's going to be. You're just like, whatever. Hopefully, I know by the time I get there, I'll have met some people and gotten the vibe and feel comfortable. I guess when I might be nervous on a set is when things start to go poorly, but right. I haven't had too many of those experiences. Yeah. yeah. Can you think back to some of your first performances and mistakes in your mind that you feel that you were hard on yourselves for that you then corrected, and what were they? Hmm. Oh, man. I mean, watching, watching stuff from... I mean, I've been acting for four and a half years now, watching some of my first stuff. I remember thinking at the time, because especially in movies, you shoot it and then you don't get to see it until a, like a year or more later, yeah. you know? And you've grown and changed so much in that time. So watching it, you're like, sometimes you'll be like, oh, why did I, why did I convey that emotion? Or why did I make that face? And you're looking at it, but you're nitpicking things. And it's, at the time, I believe I did the best I could, you know? And it's just, I think it's just slight unconscious things of just learning to try and, you know, put all the emotions there and have stuff be on the eyes and really know that there's... A process going on yeah I find that like most of the learning happens in the process of making the film mm -hmm. and that I can't I usually watch a film or anything that I've made like maybe one time and then sort of put it away I think the the general thing as an actor as a young actor is like you want to lean into those emotions the big emotions in a in a project and the arc of a character and I think that's something I've learned over the years is maybe to avoid leaning into those emotions too much well, you two have excellent, like, physical, uh, very, like, un in the uncomfortable scenes. Mm -hmm. I, I like how there's, like, sometimes silence, but with the body language or a grimace or something, mm -hmm. you can definitely see it. So was that something that you studied within yourself? Because I know some actors won't watch themselves, and they're just so opposed to it. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree with you, Ben. I'd like to watch it one or two times, and, and that's it. Because then you start nitpicking, and I don't want to remember a movie for, you know, my insecurities. I want to remember it for what yeah. my first impression was. I think that natural behavior really came out of the, the improvisational yeah. um, way that the film was made. Um, so, yeah, and in terms of watching playback and stuff like that and like adding a grimace or a, something, you know, small things like that, I, I, I'm not into to that. No, I think the only I time... It came naturally for our stuff. Yeah, absolutely. And I love the silences because you can say so much without saying words. That's the beauty of cinema is you can be expositional without dialogue. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How many takes did you have before most scenes for six years? I know you said it mm -hmm. was sometimes you were up Lots. against the wall time-wise. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Ah, yeah, I mean, we definitely did a fair amount of takes of stuff because it was improvisational, and uh, it, we usually, I mean, I don't know, I, could, I think yeah. somewhere between four and six was like a fair number. And, yeah, before we like changed camera angles or, or stuff like that. Yeah. Um, it wasn't Kubrick levels of takes. It was, <laughs> there was no scene with like 120 takes. No, no, no. No time for that. No yeah. money for that. Um, yeah, I don't know. It was definitely, uh, we, we, we got a lot of takes, though. We did a lot of different things in every every take, so it was a lot. Yeah. Yeah. When you're acting in a scene, um, how much are you thinking about blocking and where the camera is, and then what do you you know what you're going to do next? How much are you conscious of that? Uh, it's great when you don't have to be conscious of blocking. That was great. So in Hannah's movie, we didn't have to be aware of it too much. Um, 
I mean, Hannah would be like, okay, the camera's probably be in this general area, but she still let us move and the camera would move with us. Exactly. Um, it's all about following what we were yeah. doing with this film, which is great. Mm -hmm. I like to really think about that stuff when we're rehearsing mm -hmm. because that's when you sort of, with this film is less locked in, but when you do the rehearsal, which is right before you shoot it, uh, that's when you start to lock yourself into things. So mm -hmm. I really think about it a lot then. And then I try to totally forget about it. Yeah. I mean, it, sometimes it's hard. I remember there was a, I was shooting season one of American Horror Story. And on the pilot, there was this one, there was this one moment where I walk in and I'm supposed to walk a certain way or not slam my feet. I don't remember. And I, right before they would say action, I would think, okay, pick up your feet. Don't, don't make the, like, don't make that sound that's bothering the, the sound department. And every time, five times in a row, I completely forgot as soon as they said action. Yeah. Because it's hard to think about the real life at the same time when you're like, okay, I'm in the character, I'm playing this person now. And I literally, I, even though I just reminded myself like 10 seconds before they said action, I couldn't remember to pick up my feet a certain way. Yeah. And it can be hard sometimes, but. Yeah. What are the most important things that you have to figure out for a character in general? Like when you're digesting who you're playing, even if it's improv, what, what are some of, I mean, they say like what the person's like truth is or what their core motives are. What is it that you're figuring out about your character to really like drive it? I have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know either. It's kind of just, I don't know. I don't know what the specific is. I just try and figure them out, you know? I definitely want to understand the story that the director wants to tell. Mm -hmm. And try and the writer as well try and figure out exactly what that story is but again it's so dependent on the project there's so many different ways into a character and I think it, it's really depending on the script and the director yeah, yeah.